Greetings for the day, dear students. In my previous lectures, I had discussed about the hydrolysis of ATP, and in which I had told you about the introductory part of the hydrolysis of ATP. Today, I'll continue the hydrolysis of ATP in this lecture. As I had told in my previous lecture, we can compare the hydrolysis of ATP to ADP, like charging and discharging of a battery we can think of atp and adp as being sort of like the charged and uncharged forms of a rechargeable battery as we i had shown you in the previous slide so atp the charged battery has energy that can be used to power cellular reactions once the energy has been used up the uncharged battery that is adp must be recharged before it can again be used as a power source for the cell. The ATP regeneration reaction is just the reverse of hydrolysis reaction that is energy plus ADP plus inorganic phosphate gives rise to ATP and water. Now the question arises does not ADP still have a high energy bond? We have mentioned that bunch of free energy is released during ATP hydrolysis. But just how much are we talking? Delta G for the hydrolysis of, a, of 1 mole of ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate is minus 7.3 kilocalories per mole or it is equal to minus 30.5 kilojoule per mole under standard conditions standard conditions as we know one molar concentration of all molecules at 25 degrees centigrade and pH of 7 that is not bad but things get more impressive under non standard conditions that is delta G for the hydrolysis of one mole of ATP into a living cell is almost double the value at standard conditions around minus 14 kilo um, calories mi minus 14 calories per mole that is minus 57 kilojoule per mole now we have to see the reaction coupling how is the energy released by atp hydrolysis used to power other reactions in a cell in most cases cell uses a strategy called reaction coupling in which an energetically favorable reaction like ATP hydrolysis is directly linked with the energetically unfavorable that is endergonic reaction. The linking often happens through a shared intermediate meaning that a product of one reaction is picked up and used as a reactant in the second reaction. When two reactions are coupled, they can be added together to give an overall reaction and the delta G of this reaction will be the sum of the delta G values of the individual reactions. As long as the overall delta G is negative, both reactions can take place. Even a very energonic reaction can occur if it is paired with a very exergonic one such as hydrolysis of ATP. For instance, we can add up a pair of generic reactions coupled by a shared intermediate B as shown in the next slide. Here A and B, A gives rise to B and the reaction is reversible and delta G for this reaction is X. Now the other reaction in which the product of first reaction is the reactant for second reaction and B gives rise to C plus D and delta G for this reaction is Y. When we add up these two reactions, we get A gives rise to C plus D and delta G is equal to X plus Y. We might notice that intermediate B does not appear in overall coupled reaction. This is because it appears as a both a product and a reactant. In the first reaction it is product and in the second reaction it is the reactant. So two B's cancel each other out when the reactions are added. Now we see the ATP in reaction coupling. 
when reaction coupling involves atp the shared intermediate is often a phosphorylated molecule phosphorylated phosphorylated molecule is one uh, to which one of the phosphate groups of atp has been attached as an example of how this works let's look at the formation of sucrose or table sugar from glucose and fructose we can take a case study to understand this that is sodium potassium pump it's energetically unfavorable to move sodium ions out of or potassium ions into a typical cell because this movement is against the concentration gradients of the ions atp provides energy for the transport of sodium and potassium by way of membrane embedded protein called sodium potassium pump that is nak pump here in this diagram the sodium potassium pump exchange pump is shown in this process atp transfers one of its phosphate groups to the pump protein forming adp and a phosphorylated intermediate form of the pump the phosphorylated pump is unstable in its original con conformation facing the inside of the cell so it becomes more stable by changing shape opening towards the outside of the cell and releasing sodium ions outside when extracellular potassium ions bind to the phosphorylated pump they trigger the removal of the phosphate group making the protein unstable in its outward facing form the protein will then become more stable by returning to its original shape releasing the potassium ions inside the cell although this example involves chemical gradients and protein transporters the basic principle is similar to the sucrose example I, as i had discussed with you atp hydrolysis is coupled to a work requiring that is energetically unfavorable process to formation of unstable phosphorylated intermediate allowing the process to take place in a series of steps that are each energetically favorable so this was all about the hydrolysis of atp thank you have a nice day